I, I would work and, you know, I drank a lot back then. And that's what I would do. I would drink and work, drink and work. And that wasn't good for me. And I would never talk to anybody. I was certainly going down the wrong you know, path. And I, I wondered where I would be right now if I didn't become homeless. Dead, maybe. So we were standing there talking to people and Ron um, appeared from behind one of the pillars of the church and he just said, hi, how are you? Kelly just kind of saunters over to me and started talking to me. And, and again, I had no idea who she was. I thought she's some woman at the church this particular day, I'll never see her again. He later says that if he would have noticed I had a cross on my back, he would have not given me the time of day. But he chatted and it was friendly and we invited him to lunch in the park. I'm not going, I don't like people, I don't I don't want anything to do with it. It didn't seem like he had many friends. He, his whole like agenda was to stay away from people. But for some reason, I went, I went. There's a different kind of poverty that I've seen is far more painful, and it's the poverty of loneliness. If someone might even trade a burger for a relationship, that was impactful. Everything you need is out here. The only thing you don't have is a place to go. It ultimately comes down to having another person in your life recognize you and be a witness to you. So really that's what we're all about. We hit the streets every day uh, just to show the love, the mercy, the compassion of the Lord to a population that's very often judged, rejected, ignored, not even seen. The path to healing is always going to be through a relationship with another person, an authentic connection with someone else who just recognizes them for, for being another human being. My first lunch in the park, I was sitting here having lunch and a missionary came over and sat down by me. And, and, and I'm not going to lie that I didn't like it. We talked about baseball stuff and, you know, I was, I, I, I'm not going to say, you know, can you, you know, get out of here? Because I'm not like that. He wasn't interested in meeting new people or going, especially going to big events. Like it was honestly just an opportunity to be with the missionaries. And like I said, I didn't like it, but, but yet I came to the next lunch in the park. He was so surprised that we remembered his name and we were excited to see him. And over time, I would meet and spend all day with a missionary. And that's how I got to know all the missionaries. Yes, we serve lunches and we connect people to resources, but the core of our ministry is meeting people, sometimes sitting down with them on the sidewalk or in the park and having a conversation. We just really go there with no agenda other than loving um, and meeting them where they are and hopefully just showing them that they're worth it. We're often feeling isolated. Uh, we often lack a sense of dignity. And in order to sense that dignity, it takes another person. So relationships have a huge impact on one's mental health. Hang out with the missionaries all day, go to dinner. It was literally just like going home. A lot of our friends talk about this, about our lunches in the park, where they plan their entire week around that Wednesday at noon to show up, to hang out with us, to have lunch, and just be a part of something bigger than themselves. Well, actually, I was very busy working at the time, and then when I met them, it gave me a release. I'd get frustrated with work, get frustrated with life. And then this came along and, yeah, what a difference. It's my family now. You can't give what you don't have. So here in the house, it's a school of love. We're building each other up, we're challenging each other, we're helping each other grow. Living in community with so many other young people and learning to be merciful and loving to each other, it's realizing that by myself, I can't really do anything. All of my ministry has to come from the Lord. Jesus has offered me an opportunity to draw closer to Him. And the more deeply that I understand that He loves me, the more I'm able to love the people I encounter every day, whether it's just my community members or my friends on the street.
The fact that somebody else wants to get to know me and is going to invest in me, that is what is transformative, is what brought Ron to where he is today, not only just in his relationships with other people and wanting those relationships with other people, but that's what brought him to Christ. Anna Croce, she said, have you ever been to the cathedral before? No, you know, I hadn't. We went in, we stopped at Stations of the Cross. I had no idea what that was at the time. We stopped at each one, 14 of them, and she told me about each individual one. 19 years old, maybe not even that old. She knew all this stuff, and me, I knew nothing. I didn't even know that I could just walk into a church, just open the door and walk in. There's something about the missionaries, something about the environment of a church that he just felt comfortable. Times of adoration, even go to mass with us. It wasn't just Kelly, it was everybody that I met. I don't know, I just, one day I just fell in love with everybody. I, I can't explain it. I mean, at the time he didn't know exactly what was going on, but there was something that drew him back every day. There was a real change in his heart in a deeper sense, in a spiritual sense. And it was really beautiful to see his transformation over time as he, you know, would join us for prayer. You know, I didn't know anybody's phone number back then. I said, Phil, you gotta get a hold of Amanda. I need to speak to Amanda. Ron calls and he's like, I just wanted to tell you something. I said, Amanda, I think I'm gonna join the church. Will you be my sponsor? And so I was like, really touched, obviously, because, I mean... She, she literally just fainted. I, I could tell over the phone. She was just so thrilled. What a gift to to be able to to be that person for Ron, to like be his godmother. The Easter Vigil, when I got accepted to the church or entered church, whatever you want to say, was the best one that there will ever be. <laughs> just, just so you know that. <laughs>I know for a fact that Ron isn't the only one who has felt this way. There are tons of people, not just on the streets, but right beside us, in our neighborhoods, in our offices, who feel alone, who feel forgotten. We need to build up a culture of encounter, but it has to happen one encounter at a time. Being a missionary, helps me to understand especially how to receive someone. To receive them without any motive, without any expectation, just to behold the person in front of me and to receive them as Christ would, with mercy, with love, with compassion. That's something that is translated to my work now. We want people to feel and see Jesus without even really knowing it because they want to be seen as human and they want to be seen as a person and not just a number and we're able to to treat them um, with dignity and respect and to love them. So with our volunteers and all who who pass through our doors I think they feel a new inspiration that the world is worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for a change in the world and I can even be joyful doing it. Becoming homeless was like the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I'm certainly not rich, but I, I'm better off than I was born. I, I know all of you and all these missionaries, and, and that means the world to me. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to call somebody up and, and talk to them or, or ask for help like I used to be. In some ways, kind of surreal. Like, I am the godmother of someone who used to live on the streets. Like who could be my father, you know, like age-wise. Like, I have this feeling of like, I'm being looked up to, but I'm like, I don't know if you should be looking up to me. I have a lot to work on myself. But isn't that true for like all of us, right? We're, we're on a journey and there's always gonna be room for improvement, but like that doesn't mean that God doesn't want to use us for the sake of other people. See, and I would never do this either. I would never, I would never do this. I would never do this either. Thank you, Ron. But but I, I love you guys. I do, yeah. and I would never say that before either. No, you wouldn't. I I, I honestly wouldn't. So thank you. 
for what you do and who you are and and once I learned and I'm still learning.